I want to demonstrate the rewind capability that we have here. I'm going to do this by showing you my SQL database. You can see here I'm connected to uh, SQL 01 and if I select edit top 200 rows you can see I've got a very simple table of values. What I'm going to do is just make some changes. I'm going to add some new, some new names, some new ages uh, and some colors just in, in, in general. Okay, I'm just making changes to the database. Um, as I'm making those changes, they're replicating in real time to a secondary SQL server. Now what would happen if there was some kind of data loss? Maybe it could be a manual error, um, manual sabotage, or it could be a cryptovirus. Essentially, this data is going to be changed significantly. So I'm just gonna make some changes to the data. I'm just going to zero out a lot of these values I'm doing one at one at a time because I want to uh, highlight a you know the very granular nature of the data rewind that we're able to do. Okay, so now I have zeroed out all of the data in that in that database. All the ages have set to zero. Now that could have been caused by obviously manual intervention, or potentially it could even be a data corruption or a crypto virus um, encrypting the data. Now, if I was to initiate a failover to our DR server, I'm going to find exactly the same data. I've replicated those change, the changes, they're replicating real time, and I'd fail over to the same database. So that's not really what I want to do. What I want to do is recover to the instant before that first age was set to zero. So what I want to do is a data rewind. So to do that, first of all, I'm going to stop the scenario. I don't want to fail over to the, to the current live version of the data because that data has been modified. I want to go back to a previous version of the data. Once the scenario stopped, I'm able to select the restore data option. I'm presented with three choices. I can, first of all, choose to replace all of the data that's on our master, our primary SQL server, with the data that's on our SQL, secondary SQL server. Um, now that's not gonna help me here because I've already replicated the, the corrupted data. I don't want to bring that data back. I can choose to rewind the data on the secondary server and then replace the data on the primary server. So that could be an interesting option. Third option is rewind the data on the replica server and leave the master SQL server intact. So with that option, I'm able to bring up the database using data that I've rewound. And then if I choose, if, if, if I decide that's my good version of the data that I want to preserve, I can then come back and restore the data back to the original server. So I'm going to choose this third option for now. Now choose my rewind point. Now I may or may not have some scheduled um, rewind bookmarks. However, because I'm looking for the latest point in time, I'm going to specify all points. I also know, um, you know, specifically which data I'm actually looking at. It's this demo database. And I can choose um, to look at st start. If I know approximately when the issue occurred, I could put in a date time filter. I'm just gonna display all of the available um, re recovery points. So you can see here, there's some, some activity going on here. 
you can see it's, this is the oldest one and this is the newest one now I don't really know which of these entry points has got my good version of the data but if you remember I, I zeroed out all of the all of the ages one at a time in order to trigger multiple points so what I'm going to do I'm just going to choose one around here I want to first of all recover or show the database at the halfway point where some of the ages have been zeroed out but some haven't for that reason I will get a warning that it may result in some inconsistent data but I'm not worried about that in this instance okay very quickly that was literally a second the rewind process is completed successfully now if I bring up my SQL um, management studio and I can try and connect to my secondary server secondary SQL server connect again so now I can bring up my database this is the on my replica server and look at the top 100 rows. now you can see here I've got some good data that I've, I've rewound but still I've got some of these zeros so I really need to go back further in time in order to get back to the before the corruption occurred so what I can simply do again is choose to restore data And again, I'm going to choose to rewind data on the replica. Again, I can now see the later versions of the database. I'm going to again choose a another bookmark notice there's there's actually less points available to to rewind now because i've already rewound so many it's not possible to to forward wind once you've done a rewind for that reason it might be a good idea to take a snapshot before you actually start doing this process but i'm going to estimate this one um, obviously if this was critical data i might want to go through each step in in turn until i find the the latest version with no corruption but i'm just going to choose this particular point for now and see how we go okay and the rewind is again successful so just going to again start the SQL service on the secondary SQL server and this time say edit top 200 rows and you can see we have the data back it's all good data none of the uh, the age values have been zeroed out however we're currently running on SQL 02 um, and really we want to be running on SQL 01 because this is still got this is our primary server that still has the corrupted data so if we go back to our um, console we can choose again to restore the data this time we're just going to choose to replace all the data on the master SQL server with the data from the replica which we have already rewind Okay, we can see that uh, all modifications have been replicated Re recovery process is finished and we should be able to 
refresh this table. There you go, SQL 01, and we have restored all the data to the instant prior to the data corruption.